Every once in a while, an individual performance creates headlines around the AFL world. Usually, it's one of the game's superstars, like Buddy's 13 goals or Tom Mitchell getting 54 touches. But sometimes, these amazing individual games come from some of the AFL's lesser-known players. I'm Jacko from Off The Play, and here are six individual performances that shocked the AFL world. Number one, Mark McGough, Collingwood vs Essendon, Round 5, 2002. The true Anzac Day specialist. McGough was an unlikely type, not overly blessed with athleticism, but Collingwood took the punt on him and the young midfielder made it his civic duty to repay them by dominating Anzac Day games. McGough's statistical average on Anzac Day games far exceeded his other games in the black and white, but it's his first one that we all remember. The 17-year-old had 24 possessions in the wet, earning the Anzac Day medal and three Brownlow votes. Number 2. Gary Moorcroft, Essendon vs Western Bulldogs, Round 14, 2001. The last time these two clubs met, Bulldogs coach Terry Wallace formulated a game plan to topple the invincible Essendon side of the year 2000. Unfortunately, on this occasion, Terry Tan didn't bank on Gary Moorcroft coming out like a miniature redhead version of Gary Ablett Sr. on steroids. A six goal first half, one of the most spectacular individual halves of football we have ever seen, which included arguably the greatest mark ever taken in the AFL. Number three, Dean Polo, Richmond versus Essendon, round six, 2006. Just 12 months prior to this game, Polo was running around for the Coburg Tigers reserves. But a year is a long time in football, and Polo was called up to make his debut in what was the first ever night dream time at the G game. Polo dominated with 28 disposals, three goals, and the maximum Brownlow votes. He played a starring role to essentially win the game for the Tigers. Number four, Mark Lacroix, West Coast vs Essendon, round 16, 2010. Let me set the scene here. West Coast was struggling on the bottom of the ladder and faced an away trip to Melbourne. Nobody expected anything exciting to occur in this game, but... Let's know what happened. Mark Lacroix played the game of his life, kicking an even dozen goals against the Bombers. A phenomenal performance when considering some of the legendary forwards who never reached 12 goals in a single game. Number 5, Simon Beaumont, Carlton vs Collingwood, Round 17, 1999. What better way to celebrate your 50th game than by kicking a bag in a big match at the G? Eight goals in the first half for Beaumont, many of those goals coming on gun defender Mal Michael. Beaumont finished with a respectable 179-game AFL career with the Blues and Hawthorne, but that eight-goal effort is a number he never went near before or since. What a magnificent performance. Number six, Shane Ellen, Adelaide vs St Kilda, 1997 Grand Final. Raising the stakes a little here, we have Ellen's performance in the most important game of the 1997 season. Disaster had struck the Crows. Star forward Tony Modra, the man fans called Godra, was out with a knee injury. The Crows needed a miracle, and coach Malcolm Blight, always one to think outside the box, thought, hey, let's throw Shane Ellen up forward. Now, Ellen looks like a reliable man, the kind of guy that would stop if he saw your car broken down by the side of the road, but could the man who had only kicked three goals in his 37 AFL games to date stand up in a grand final? You bet he could. Ellen produced the game of his life to kick five goals and be a huge factor in the Crows' first ever premiership. And that's our list. Please let us know in the comments which games we've missed out on and don't forget to subscribe to Off The Play.